Assalamu alaikum this is Shoma Tazara and today I'm going to discuss a very important topic of gynecology that is vaginal candidiasis now uh, this is a very 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 important topic uh, regarding prof point of view for final year students uh, and over it is also uh, very important clinically so it this uh, disease is also called vulvovaginal candidiasis candidial vaginitis and vaginal yeast infection now by this name how we can interpret that what is happening in this disease is that suppose vaginitis itis means any inflammation is occurring where the inflammation is occurring in the vagina or in the vulva what is vulva it is a female external sex organs are called the mm, vulva fine and why this inflammation is occurring because of an infection of a uh, yeast or fungus that is candida so in combined what does this vaginal candidiasis means that it is an inflammation of vagina or vulva because of infection due to candida species now what are the causative agent it is very evident that it is because of candida albicans now it is three uh, for this species of it candida albicans 90% of the disease is because of this organism then 10% is because of candida glabrata and uh, very few because of candida tropicalis now this candida is also present in our body as a normal flora in on the skin and inside the body in mouth throat gut and vagina now the basic now when it is present here it is not causing any disease as such but the basic mechanism of this disease that is uh, candidial vaginal uh, vaginitis our uh, vaginal candidiasis what happens in it is that the basic mechanism here is that any factor which comes and it alters the normal flora or it decreases the patient's immunity then these organism which are present normally in our body and not causing any disease will now overgrow fungal growth will occur and it will cause the disease fine now this is basically the mechanism of disease what are the risk factors or the females who are more prone to vaginal candidiasis now the risk factors are basically to learn the risk factors there is just a simple mnemonic you can say uh, that first of all how will an, in, will an infection occur in in my body or to me is that if my immunity is weak as compared to another normal individual or if the normal flora present in in my body is being disturbed because of any reasons fine so what are the factors that will decrease the immunity of the patient now we know some drugs like steroids like chemotherapy immunosuppressant drugs they decrease the immunity of the patient plus uh, patients like uh, diabetic patients or the hiv infection like aids it also decreases the immunity and in turn make the patient the female more prone to vaginal candidiasis now all the factors that alters the normal flora what are those factors like if i if i if i am taking a lot of antibiotics and what i'll do is that i am killing many of the bacteria and as a result what is happening that my normal flora is being disturbed so antibiotic use particularly the broad spectrum antibiotics then oral contraceptive pills now why this oral contraceptive pills causes so that they contain estrogen and what estrogen does is that it stimulates the fungal growth and what is candida it is a fungus so if the patient is using ocps rich in estrogen then it can cause uh, this uh, vaginal candidiasis to occur he is she is more prone to it hormonal imbalances and now the vagina if the patient is using soaps and perfumes on the vagina it is also altering the normal flora and as a result causes so plus some patients who are using contraceptive devices like intrauterine devices they also uh, cause vaginal candidiasis moving on now we're going to discuss that what is the clinical presentation of that patient fine how the patient will uh, present here is that uh, the clinical presentation is now first of all very very important that how we will diagnose the patient the key pathognomonic feature is that two major points in every scenario they will be present that patient is having itching female will come to us and she'll complain that i am having itching on my vagina pruritus second vaginal discharge now this is a very special vaginal discharge it is thick white curdy or cottage cheese like discharge now these kind of words will come will encounter you and they all will show that it is uh, vaginal candidiasis 
now these two major points what itching and vaginal discharge moving on that we know that in that area what is present vagina is present and urethra is present so since there is infection and inflammation so painful sexual intercourse will be pre- present in that female that is called dysperunia and painful urination which is called dysuria excoriations mean damages will be present there so this is how the patient will present symptoms fine most important symptoms itching which are discharge followed with these two moving on to the signs now when we will clinically examine the patient what we will see is that if the patient is having a severe disease how we will identify that he is having a severe disease that first of all during vaginal examination there will be cracks in the vaginal wall one number two there will be edema means swelling there or erythema means redness there so these all if we see we will diagnose that, that patient is having a severe vaginal candidiasis moving on now how we will diagnose that patient now diagnosis is very interesting first of all by all the clinical presentation means the sign and symptom we discussed the most important method of diagnosis of this disease is clinically moving on that otherwise what we can do is wet smear examination what we do in it is now what is this name all we'll take the discharge from the female through a swab of course put it on a slide put 10% koh over it and then see it under the microscope of course we will see the the flora which is causing the disease what is the purpose now if we are doing some investigations for viva purpose or for our own general knowledge we should know that if we are doing an investigation what is its main purpose so the purpose here is that we have to diagnose the candidial infection plus by this wet smear examination we can rule out the whether the whether the same scenario is because of trichomoniasis or bacterial vaginosis or secondary candidiasis and other method is perianal we take the swabs perianal swabs or vaginal swabs will culture now what is the culture purpose here that's a simple bacterial culture we do culture media pe and what is the re- purpose here is that first of all we'll diagnose candidiasis second we can even find out that if there are any azole resistant candidia present there uh, or if non albicans species we've discussed before glabrata and uh, tropicalis so if they are present so that we can treat the patient accordingly this is its purpose of culture second uh, another p- method is we can go for gram staining or wet film examination and direct plating onto the fungal medias so these are all the methods of its diagnosing moving on that how we will treat the patient now talking about treatment first of all we discussed already the risk factors so we'll start the treatment by giving risk factor assessment or general supportive measures fine so what we'll do is that all those factors we discussed before which are causing decrease in immunity or altering the normal flora we will remove all the causative factors like if the patient is taking ocps we'll discontinue the ocps and replace them with low estrogen dose ocps or progesterone only pills if she is taking steroids then we'll stop the steroid but of course by tapering its dose not immediately because it will cause its own side effects which are plenty of them moving on that immune suppressants if she is taking or chemotherapy will stop that immediately uh, in antibiotics used recently will stop that and now we'll maintain hygiene of that patient mm, and we know that soaps and perfumes they alter the normal flora so we'll ask the female not to use soaps and perfumes so you instead use a simple clean water to uh, clean her vagina and synthetic underwears will ask her not to use them maintain adequate hygiene will ask the female now we know that diabetes was a risk factor remember so we we'll ask the female that uh, maintain adequate glycemic control means glucose level should be within normal levels now many of the patients by using these measures they usually uh, get resolve uh, the disease get resolved but what if if, the, if it not does so then we'll uh, go for uh, uh, measurements like medical management now in mild or moderate disease what happens is that we go for of course antifungal drugs first priority is topical and later on we go for oral management now topically we go for clotrimazole clotrimazole we give to the patient in the form of pessaries and now most of the drugs are of once once dose or once daily so just you can easily remember it so clotrimazole in the pessary if we are using 500 mg it is given just a single dose one time or for 100 mg for over 6 days 
and if we're going for oral treatment then we have fluconazole very important fluconazole we go for 150 mg and it's just a single dose i repeat it's a single dose it's not a single dose daily it's just only a single dose or we can go for oral itraconazole now just to remember it i have made a short mnemonic that remember this t from this t remember 202 times so 200 mg is the dose and it is given two times single day this is the way how we go for itraconazole and it's alternative therapy to uh, if someone asks you that we i can give clotrimazole or fluconazole or itraconazole so what should i do is that alternative therapy we can go for nystatins which is used in the form of pessaries or in the cream forms or oral imidazole now this oral imidazole is very good but very important it is contraindicated in pregnancy we can't give this drug to a female who is pregnant so this is all the management for mild to moderate disease moving on to severe disease now if the patient is having severe disease what we do is first of all we go for risk factor uh, assessment and we remove all the risk factors then this fluconazole now in severe disease we have to give the do uh, the medicine for prolonged periods mean increase the dose of the medicine what we do is that the same fluconazole now our goal is to maintain therapeutic levels for 72 hours or what does the 72 hours means three days so what we do is that we give fluconazole now listen very carefully fluconazole 150 mg tablet will give to the patient it will remain in the vaginal secretions for up to three days means 72 hours then after three days we'll go for an other dose and then similarly we give three doses to the patient every three days interval way second its option is topical clotrimazole and that is uh, continued for two weeks now what if if the patient is having a severe disease uh, according to the symptoms we discussed before signs sorry and the female is pregnant now in that case we go for topical imidazole and uh, it is given for two weeks for induction therapy and moving on by a weekly dose of clotrimazole 500 mg now this is for pregnant females. Why? Because imidazole, uh, because uh, oral imidazole is contraindicated in pregnancy, plus fluconazole is contraindicated in pregnancy. Why? Because it can cause miscarriage if given during the first trimester. So we don't give these drugs. Remember, it's very important. Last, if the patient is having a recurrent infection. Now, what is a recurrent infection? That over a period of twelve months, he is he or she sorry, she is having the infection four infections over a period of twelve months. Then we label it that she is having recurrent infections. Now, what we'll do in that patient is that first of all, of course, we go for risk factor assessments we'll uh, uh, remove all the risk factors because once the risk factors are not removed until they are not removed the patient uh, will not uh, be relieved of the symptoms then we go for fluconazole on the same method 150 mg every three days three doses and it is followed by a suppressive therapy now what we do is that fluconazole same 150 mg is now given which was every three days it's now changed to one time weekly for six months and then we'll stop the fluconazole and see that okay after giving such a dose is the patient responding to it has its infection disappeared if yes good but if the infection is not disappeared uh, disappeared and still infection is present then we'll repeat the same fluconazole one time weekly for one year and do the same procedure again thank you very much this was all about uh, vaginal canidiasis summarized in a single video i hope you liked it if you do so so please like share and comment my video and uh, Please do so because you can help many other people by doing so as thank you so much. Thank you very much. Allah Fiz.